Okay, a little disclaimer here. This is not a how-to video. I'm not qualified to do what I did. Um, I don't recommend anybody doing it. Um, it's dangerous. If you're going to do it at home, have somebody with you and be very, very careful because this is scary stuff. I have forklift problems. That middle cylinder is leaking something terrible. Now, a couple of years ago, I re I took these two cylinders out and had them repacked or whatever it's called and they're doing fine and I did that inside and that was disaster because there just wasn't enough room in there but once you get started you can't move the forklift so this one I'm gonna do outside if I get some rain delays it's okay um, this is a Caterpillar 50 and then it's electric uh, forklift and I really like it because it always starts even if it sits for months whereas I used to have a gas powered one or diesel powered one it was always some kind of issue you know it was gasoline so um, first thing I'm gonna try to do is lift it up enough lift it up a little bit and take the forks off the, so they'll be out of my way and uh, we'll proceed from there that's a two inch trailer ball that's on the end of the fork if it would have been a two and five sixteenths I would have either had to take it off or get help because I was right at my limit and I was scared to death I was drop that thing on my foot, but I did it. So I want to lift it way up, but it's so low on fluid it won't go up. So I'm going to put some more fluid in it and I'm going to lose it all. I hate to do that, but I guess I got to. Anyway, I think I got it at the best height where I can still get to the bolts up there. It's going to be kind of tight. And yet let the cylinder collapse and be able to get it out. So I've got a couple of timbers here. So uh, I'll let it down on these timbers. Let's see if I can do this in one hand. Okay, this all makes me a little bit nervous because I know all that stuff's heavy. And I know when you undo a hose, it can just drop. But I think I have it safely chalked up. Now I'm going to need to go undo the cylinder from the top. It's really crowded. Got a lot of stuff going on up there. Let's see what we can do. So this little bunch of hoses right here are not connected to the cylinder I want to get out. I need to get out those two bolts there and there's two on the other side and there's one from the top. And there's one up here at the top. And I think if I support that conglomeration of chain and hose then I can break one of the hoses and let pressure off the cylinder and the cylinder should collapse all the way down and then by taking off these two big old huge bolts one there and one there and the bottom of this chain I should just be able to get it out of there maybe somehow okay let me go see if I can get those four bolts off the top I need to get some smaller wrenches Okay, so I got the top part loose. It really wasn't very hard. But the cylinder won't drop. Um, there's a snap ring right down there. I don't know if you can see it, but I think that's the cylinder's hanging from that snap ring. So I think if I get it off, the cylinder will drop a few inches because it's lost a lot of fluid. So let's uh, let's give it a shot and see if I can get it off. So I kind of hit a dead end on up top. I can't get it to move. Can't get nothing to happen. So I've uh, unbolted the cylinder from the frame at the bottom it had a big huge uh, like a C clamp and it had one bolt at the bottom so I'm gonna see if I can't scoot the bottom of the cylinder out and if I can get out far enough I can undo the hydraulic hose which is inaccessible it's right back here and maybe without the hydraulic hose maybe it will um, come down so this is where my logic went really south. i had been pushing on the down lever, which typically lets the cylinder fall under its own weight, but it wasn't, and I'm sh not sure why. I think it's because I had the um, props, the wooden props up there. So this whole time I'm trying to compress the cylinder, and what I really needed to do was take the fluid out of the cylinder by removing the hose. Now granted, it was really hard to get to, and I had to make some changes to be able to get to it, but what I'm doing here is it, it was a waste of time and frankly a little bit dangerous. 
there's a little nipple on the bottom of the cylinder casting that fits down into the bottom and, and it can't go sideways until you lift that thing all the way up out of the hole and it's probably two inches long and uh, that that's why I can't get it to slide from uh, one side or the other I can't get it out right now Okay, by lifting it up five and a half inches and putting these blocks under my verticals, I can now get to the hydraulic line in the back. And I have it loose a little bit, but I'm going to loosen it some more. And I'm getting ready to make a hellacious mess. Because really, there's really no way to get a pan up underneath there. Um, so I'm going to loosen it a little bit and see what falls out to sky. Might be interesting. So I know my hand is up behind the forks holding the wrench, but I promise you all the rest of my body is away from all the moving parts because I had no idea what was going to happen when this hose finally came off. thinking something bad's fixing to happen. I know there's pressure on that hydraulic line. At least enough to hold the cylinder up. Of course, you know, what happened was what I expected. The fluid went everywhere. But what I didn't notice because the fluid was going everywhere was that that hose dropped about 12 inches straight down because it was actually holding up the bottom part of the inner forks. So that's what made it um, Later on, I had a hell of a time getting it back together, and I didn't realize what had happened. But anyway, that did the trick. The um, cylinder no longer had pressure on it, so I was able to move forward. Well, that was easy. Wasn't expecting that to fall out the sky. But uh, I'm okay. Luckily, hit the ladder. So the cylinder can come out now. So these long um, threaded rods had double nuts and that's what holds the bottom of the chain. And they're a little too tight to do by hand and they're too loose for a wrench. It's kind of frustrating. And when I put it back together, I was kind of stupid. I should have reinstalled them in this position, but I went ahead and put the whole thing together and it made for a long time turning the wrench one sixth of a nut every single time for 30 minutes. It's just because the access up in the back is so limited, it's just so hard to do anything, even turn bolts or wrenches, there's just no room. Had a pretty good mess by this time, but I'm still trying to um, keep from dumping any oil, any more oil on the ground than, uh, than I could help. Um, for the past few months, the forklift's been doing a good job of spreading all, all by itself. It didn't need my help. Okay, the cylinder is out. Nothing's broken. I'm still alive, amazingly. Go uh, try to hose it off a little bit. So if I can get the cap off, I will try to rebuild it myself. But it's my understanding that that cap is on there with a lot of torque. So I don't know if I'll be able to do it myself.
make something to bolt this thing down so I can put a lot of torque on that cap. First, I got to get the grease off my neck. So I was trying to burn a bolt hole in my table with my plasma torch, and uh, didn't have any luck. I think I had so much spray back right in the beginning. I think I cooked my tip, so and I didn't have another one. So put the plasma torch away and pulled out the old magnetic drill. You know, the magnetic drill did the trick. The cylinder is on the workbench. It's a sturdy workbench, and I think it's actually welded to this structure. I got a bolt in the back here through the workbench. I got a U-bolt up here through the uh, cylinder and under the workbench with a plate under it. So I think I'm ready to apply torque to this cap, which it looks like it's bronze, so that's telling me it can't be too, too tight because it's not hardened steel. But I don't have a wrench that fits it, so I gotta go make some phone calls and see if I can borrow a 48 inch pipe wrench or something like that. I'm sure nobody will have the proper wrench is what I ought to have, but we'll find something that'll work or I'll cut one out of steel and make my own. So because of my keen hindsight, I realized that all this drilling and bolting was just a waste of time. For one thing, the cap wasn't that tight. I could have almost got it with a strap wrench. And for another thing, the whole deal was bolted tight securely to the forklift, which weighs 5,000 pounds, so I could have put the wrench on it while it was still in the forklift and tightened it up um, and would have saved myself a couple hours of labor. But uh, anyway, no fun spent, just time, and it worked. Not much to this thing. There's nothing down there. There's an O-ring. No, an O-ring and a, some kind of ring. That's all there is to it. Good grief, this is simple. Let's see if I can get that O-ring off. I'm gonna go around the corner to a hydraulic store and see if I can just buy that. I don't know the part number. And the serial number of this machine is all uh, jacked up, so I can't really read the serial number. So hopefully I can match it. This is kind of interesting. The oil on my workbench ran down here until it touched my leather, leather glove. And look how that glove soaked up all the oil. I mean, it's, a, it's an inch higher than the tabletop, and it's completely saturated with oil. Interesting. Anyway, this is, uh, this is the heart of the matter. I got seals on the inside and O-rings on the outside. I got to get them out and see if I can match them somewhere and get new parts. So look at what I got today. 85 bucks, that's about 85 bucks an ounce. But anyway, I had to have them. And it's a rainy day, so nice rainy day project, putting this thing back together. It shouldn't be hard because I remember where everything goes. This is the seal and it goes in that bottom joint. And this is the wiper and it goes in the top joint. And the O-ring goes on the outside. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it just to make sure it's going to slip and slide okay. Actually, I'm going to put some gloves on and then I'm going to do it. This oil seal is not like a typical metal oil seal with a rubber lip. It is all plastic, some kind of hard, soft, semi-flexible plastic. And it has to be because you have to like fold it in like a pretzel shape to get it in there. It's, uh, it takes a lot of force. You kind of think you're going to destroy it, but it, uh, it went in there and snapped into place. And uh, it's not coming out without damage like the original one. I had to really booger it up well, to get it out. To and it will probably be the same with this one.
vedere ma dove sono? Here. So it's my understanding that that white one holds back all the pressure. This blue one scrapes the cylinder clean every trip to make sure there's no uh, crap hold on. And you know what I don't remember? I don't remember which way this thing went. I'm gonna have to um, take a picture of it. I'm gonna have to take these gloves off and look in my phone. All right, check it out. The white thing goes first. Ooh, the heck of a stretch. That's all the moving parts. So now I can put the cylinder back in with the locking rings. Let me go get it. It's kind of heavy. So I'm pretty sure these two rings keep it from coming out. I'm forgetting a pretty important piece of the puzzle here. I gotta put the cap on before we put the cylinder in the hole. Nope. 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 So putting this thing back together, I had a, had a problem. The, um, the wiper part would not jump over the groove that was in the end of the shaft and I pushed on it, I pried on it I hit it with a hammer and a block of wood I've got some little thin tools trying to slide it on and it just wouldn't go on and then it wouldn't come off because the oil seal proper is snapped into that groove and it wasn't going to come off without damage and the little oil seal was like 30 bucks and I didn't want to ruin it so I ended up having a little pity party and I was able to get that blue seal out just took it out and I thought well I don't use this forklift that much I don't have to have a wiper it'll still last a long long time and so that's kind of rationalization right so anyway now the, the um, blue seal is out I had to cut it in half to get it off the shaft and putting it back together without the seal and I'm just thinking, you know, just limited use, it's going to be all right. Um, but then I slept on it, and I took it back apart the next day. David came to help me, and we figured out a way to make it work. Boy, these things are heavy, though. So right now the U-bolt is on the wrong side of the cylinder to really get a good torque on it. It just wants to roll up on the U-bolt. Since it wasn't that tight coming off, I figured it didn't have to be that tight going back on. And I got it pretty tight, but it was off or not because we were going to take it off the next day anyway. All right. Ready to go on the forklift, but we're having tropical storm, whatever his name is. So I'm uh, going to have to wait for a drier day. Okay, so for the life of me, I could not get the wiper to go back into the, or couldn't get this to go over this with the wiper on it. 
and I got real frustrated. So I put it together without the wiper, thinking I didn't need it anyway. This thing might go up and down just a handful of times a month. There's no reason to uh, have to put that thing in there, but um, it really needs it. So we're, we're going to try something different. We're going to. Um, I shoved a paper towel in there to keep the seal protected, and we're going to take the grinder and ri round over that little lip. And cross our fingers that that will allow us to uh, pop that wiper up on the bump. So this is as far back as we can pull the cap because the oil seal, the important one, is holding us from going any further back. So shoved a crack full of uh, paper towels to uh, protect the seal from any metal dust and we grind, grind it, ground it, rounded, and it worked. We got, this, we got the wiper to pop in. Okay, so you remember when I undid the hydraulic line and everything spewed and things happened real fast and I didn't really see what happened, but now I figured it out. My boom, my forklift boom, has three parts. Um, the outer part is fixed at the bottom. It doesn't move. The inner part is what I have lifted up high and blocked with those um, timbers. And there's an inner, inner part that moves half as fast as the inner part and I didn't have it blocked now it doesn't move very far but it moves so when I took the pressure off the hydraulic line and the chains fell it dropped and it dropped I don't know three four five inches so when it dropped it pulled the hydraulic hose twice as far because it's a two to one deal so when I went to put it back you know the cylinder fit in there fine I don't have video of that and it bolted up fine, but I could not reach the um, hydraulic hose. I couldn't quite figure it out because, you know, it's once you know what's happening, it's really apparent. But if, if you don't know what's in there moving, you really, well, for one, you got no business doing it, but that didn't stop me. I didn't know why the hose wouldn't reach until I finally figured it out that the inner, inner part had dropped. Now, picking it up was a trick because it's, Two inches from the ground I could not get any kind of lifting device under it so I ended up using a, a crowbar and lots of metal shims and a little bitty uh, screw jack I had so I would just uh, you know pick it up a quarter inch at a time and shim it and back and forth and back and forth and made it work so I'm paying the price here for not knowing what I'm doing but I'm getting it making progress um, there's not enough room in there to get my jack, so I got a crowbar and a pile of dunnage, and I can pry it like a quarter inch at a time. And when I get it up, I stack um, some dunnage onto this side or screw up my little baby jack. But so far, I got this much slack in the hose, and it's two for one. So every time I come up an inch here, uh, the hose gets two inches longer. So I've got. I don't know if you can see where it goes. There's the hose. There's the fitting, so if I can lift it up like two or three more inches, I'm going to have it. And it's getting easier. The higher it gets, i got a little more room, but it is a little unnerving because i got all this weight over my head. So I'm constantly making sure that these don't move because these are holding that weight up there. And I'm always having double stacks down here, some over here and some over here to make sure it just doesn't fall and I lose what I've had. But... Um, it's probably not the way the owner's manual recommends this to be done, but it's the way I got myself stuck to it, so we're going to get it. So I've been prying and shimming and prying and shimming, and I'm within an inch, within an inch of making up the hose. That means I just need to come up another half inch, and uh, I can make up my hose. So a little more prying, a little more shimming. I'm making sure I got support on both sides, so... It, uh, it looks kind of crazy, but I think I'm halfway safe. Okay, I got it. I got the hydraulic hose hooked up and tight, and I got the two stoppers on the two chains back to where they were before I took it apart. And I got all the hydraulic fluid I have in the tank. It's probably not enough. I put in four gallons, but it's really not high enough. So I'm hoping now that if I lift the cylinder, that chain will straighten out, and the cylinder will get to the top up there where I can finish putting together the little chain guides and hose guides and stuff that I haven't put on yet. Um, 
none of it is structural it's just uh guides and things so let's uh oh i got another bolt to put on real quick curious i am see what happens So there was lots of air in the system, which could be expected. And the cap part, the little thing that where the chain rollers are, was crooked, and I had to get in there with a crowbar, and it probably would have straightened itself out. I got in there with a crowbar and turned it a little bit. It rotates on the shaft, and really, there's nothing holding the top of the cylinder in place. It's strictly gravity. So I guess if you were riding around and hit a huge bump, it's possible that the top could jump up and get crooked. I don't know, I guess it just doesn't happen. Hi George, I think it works. I need to bolt a couple clamps on here. I need to put the pipe wrench on it and give it a final tighten, the um, cylinder itself. And uh, put the forks back on it. We'll call this baby done, if it works. I do need to get some more uh, fluid. I still got a lot of air in the system. Forklift is now a forklift again and not a machine for oil in my driveway. Good stuff. I got a hell of a mess to clean up though. <laughs> So right here is where the bottom cylinder is extended all the way out and the other two cylinders take over. And here you can see that hose that gave me so much trouble. And it's because the little rollers come up half as fast as the bottom frame. So it's almost like four to one. So for every inch that I was able to pry that thing off the ground, I was getting four inches and if I'd have known that in the beginning if I'd have been smarter when I chalked up the upper part with the uh, two buys I would have just chalked up this bottom part too and it would have been done but the forklift is working awesomely now these orange hoses go to the, the side shift let me get down so you can see it this is a pretty pretty neat little contraption they've invented here you see the orange hoses are all coiled up they were in the way but they weren't involved they were just in the way and they send hydraulic pressure to the little cylinder that slides the forks side to side and that's a really handy thing especially where I use the forklift and it's so there's so little bit of room but it's all good everything's working I got my mess cleaned up. I'm gonna go park the forklift and get ready to start on the trolling motor. Let's back her up. Put it in the house. Put it in the forklift house. Kind of a tight fit because I was I was trying not to use up any more of my parking lot than I had to. Set the forks down, turn her off. This production is finished. 